So coming up are the five moves that we have picked for the WWE versus UFC Fighter Challenge. Here they are. Okay, so what we're going to do is he's going to grab the leg, he's going to roll him over, pick the leg up, and he's in here. Figure four with the hands, and it's a toes and ankle, and he's going to tap. The escape, which they would try and do, is because there's lots of movement on this, and there's lots of room, as he would get up on his hands and knees, and he would try and crawl to the ropes. Oh, rope break for anyone that knows wrestling. They would also do this as an escape if they couldn't reach the ropes. Yeah. You'd pull the leg, it would be in here, you'd roll under, and he'd lose the grip. Right guys, so as I said, I was going to show you the modern day variation. This is called a toe hold, right? It's very similar to the same movement as you saw with Joe then, doing the figure four, exactly the same, right? Figure four, because the knee grab my wrist, put it down. Instead, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to grab his heel, grab his last three toes, crank, right? It is painful. First of all, this leg goes under his butt, right? Sink him in. Right, now from here, you see how I force the bend in his leg? Keep it nice and tight on my heel in. Now this is the clever bit. Now I grab those toes I was all about. I start forcing it down. This arm comes over, grabs his heel. From here, yeah. I, I'm hardly even moving, right? If I start rolling with it... Yeah, okay. Obviously, MMA style, I could be smacking him in the face, but he's gonna go backwards and protect his own face. I'm gonna try and get up, and he's just gonna kick me back down. He's gonna pull even harder, and yeah, there's not really much I can do. There are escapes, guys, but they're a little bit more advanced. So you would have gone from here, or gloss, or gone through the hip work. You know, you've got to pass that across to make a difference. Inside, back to the calf crash. All of them are horrible, guys. Right? So, mate, I think a lot of jiu-jitsu schools think they can do these, so go real careful. would grab the leg, he'd start showboating. The guy would be on the floor, flinging his hands around, going, no, don't do it. I'm like a beetle. <laughs> you swing it over the top, you lock it down. Go underneath, oh, fucking cunt. bend that back, sit it down, and clamp that fucker on there like so. How does it feel, Brad? Fucking horrible. So that's relaxed now, but all I do is straighten the knees, and it gets real tight in the <laughs> right guys, so why Joe's in it? So the escape for this was to roll this way. Oh, oh, it was to go all the way over and apparently it inverted the lock. <laughs> oh, yeah. And apparently oh, that's it just inverts the lock. Why would you do that? Though? But it doesn't. That's just as bad. <laughs> yeah, I always saw, thought that as well. I've never done this before guys. Woo! Yeah, I'm ripping the one. Boom! Alright, so he's in here. Oh, fuck it. Yeah, now, this is horrible. No wonder they were screaming. I wonder if I could come underneath this leg, roll under this leg, and then come out. Wow. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, but I would lock that Yeah, lock you would lock down. it in, yeah. I'd lock that down and I'd pull it in tight. You just put it on 100% straight oh. away, you'd tap me straight away anyway. It would be horrendous. So there was a lot of legitimacy in Ric oh. Flair's ankle lock. <laughs> They don't call him the living legend for nothing. Rick, you're a badass. All right, guys, I'm going to have to apologise to you. I don't actually know the name of this. I've always called it the Texas Cloverleaf, but Joe's just informed me that's actually another wrestling move that I've just stolen off someone else. But anyway, so what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to start standing here, right? I separate his legs. I'm going to back step here. One more time. Back step. Feed the knee underneath. Here. Right, while I'm controlling this the whole time. Here, kick, and I've locked. Now look, I've crossed his legs and I've got sexy leg legs. Right now, it's time to get a bit of revenge for Joe being a cop. Same again, guys, watch this. I'm going to get a gable grip, 
And what I've got with you, I'm not going to lean away and you're going to take my chest. Right? And you do it the other way. You might see Eddie Bravo, he does it this way. Ah, much of there. It's even worse. And now I twist this knee that way, this hand that way. Oh, yeah. It is not pleasant. If I get Joe in that same move again. All right, so then. Right. If I get Joe in that same move again, here. All right, what Joe needs to do from here is turn to his left shoulder under the floor, go to his belly, and commando crawl away. That is the actual and only escape I know. Taught me by Ben Henderson. So, a little bit of a name drop there. <laughs> Cheers, Ben. Cheers, <laughs> Okay, so the crippler crossface started like this. He usually came from an arm drag, which Chris Benoit would take to the floor. He'd grab the arm, he'd place between his legs, trapping that one out. He'd come across the face in a gable grip, and he'd crank on the nose. And it was pretty fucking nasty. Like, the escape which people would do from here, they would try and reach for the rope with their that hand, reach in vain, or they would reach for the hand and break it off the face. Pulling it down or pushing it upwards, depending oh, on which way it goes. Up. You push it up, it goes even tighter until it pops off. But then you've then got to get rid of this, and usually Benoit will just grab it again. The proper escape, which it would be used in BJJ, if you did this move, is on, it's tight, it's in. You roll into it, you pull the arm free, and then you probably roll me over the back. Which obviously is actually a really, really basic escape, and it's probably why they didn't use it in the WWE, because it was so easy to escape from. But it hurts like fuck though. It hurts like fuck until you roll into it. It's still that, the first bit. Oh, it's horrible. It's the hurting bit. Yeah, the hurting bit is a proper neck crank. It twists your neck, it, over, it hyper extends your lower back. I had something in my head I was going to do with Joe until I realised what a fucker he was to me then. Now I'm going to change it and do something very, very similar but worse than what I was going to do. I was going to do a bully chip. Now I'm going to be a about it and fucking hurt him. <laughs> now I'm going to put him in an Oma Plata slash cross face neck crank. Very similar move, but a bit nastier and a bit more dick. <laughs> right guys, so from this little move I'm going to show you now, I'm going to attack his arm first. I'm going to do it from guard, right? Right, first of all, you can trap an arm because I want to get an Oma Plata. It's not a move I like or I ever, ever, ever go for. I thought just to be a prick and hurt Joe, I'd go for it. I like always like inside control. Control that elbow. Start coming across. Now, as I go for the other platter, here. I straighten my legs out. So, this is a finisher in itself, guys. It oh, yeah. hurts like fuck on the shoulders. I can also wrist lock his ass, ah, tight YouTube style. Yeah. <laughs> wrist lock. Finger up the ass. Oh, oh yeah. Smell your fucking ass. <laughs> right, so I'm from there. Right, I can straighten this out. Now you probably already gathered what yeah. I'm gonna do. Remember what you done to my precious nose a minute ago. Same <laughs> thing. I can put him in the front. But you can be more of a dick. Watch this. That now I can twist his face and pull yeah. his nose up. Fucking hell. Like that. And at the same time you're doing that, guys, with one arm. You use this arm to wrist lock him oh, yeah. and big blast his ass. <laughs> oh, give my shoulder back, you bastard. Yeah, that's not a pleasant move. We've never seen many of them used in the UFC. No. I think Ben Saunders got twice. one. It's been used technically twice, and the guy had to literally wrench the shit out of it to get it to work. How much he was expressing the pain, and he tapped out. The first Omoplata in UFC history. You can see his eyes squinting hard. He is in pain. And Ben's pushed out. From the back, he'd either spin the guy around, he'd wrap the throat, take the guy backwards, bend him over the knee, and crank the neck from there. And if you get both underneath, you can really crank. But, Brad, does this move hurt that much? No, it doesn't. It's awkward, and it looks sick as fuck, but 
there isn't enough room to really crank on the net. It will hurt and you might get a couple of clicks, but it's not enough to break the neck. This move which Brad is going to do now will definitely break your fucking neck. Right guys, so now I'm going to try and top trump what Joe's done with a real move, right? Now I, <laughs> I got taught this by Colin Fletcher and it on my fire. I think they call it the executioner, you said yep. Joe. Alright, so this is going to be pretty cool. I'm going to make sure it fucking hurts Joe as well, alright? Out of pure spite. Right, so <laughs> let's get Joe on his back. This is where he spends most of his time when inspiring me. One of my favourite moves, guys, from here, yeah. right? I like to come across, push the face, and look for the north-south choke, right? From there, it's pretty violent. <laughs> but I want to be a bit more of a dick, right? I've crushed his face. He cannot try and turn your face towards me, Joe? No. Oh, he can. I know he can. I've done it. In fact, he's pushing me off. I'm going to give him a breath. <laughs> right, now I'm going to circle towards his back. You see how my knees come underneath? Now I'm going to hook and hook. Right, now what I'm going to do now is be a C next Tuesday. And I'm going to lock my hands up, bang! Right? Now I'm going to arch back, which puts a huge amount of pressure yeah. on his neck. Which has always shocked me why guys do this move, when you could just literally, from here, oh, fucking out. drop and get me <laughs> So I've never known why guys do that, but... Fucking hell, my eyes thought they going to burst then. Which is good, it's pretty much the look I wanted. So this is what I would do to Tai Chi Chu. <laughs> put him to sleep and then put things in his mouth. It was a shooting double leg, yank him out as hard as he could, then fall to the back, drag him up, get him underneath the ankles, and he'd arch it up and <laughs> step it over. <laughs> From here, the escapes they used is they would try and get to the ropes by pressing up and pulling in. So Brad, push up. Push it up and walk back to the ropes and he gets the rope in his hand. He gets the rope, he's got three seconds, he's got to give it up. Oh. Sometimes Jericho would be a prick and he'd then walk up forward, or he'd be an ultimate prick. And he'd sit in And they would be screaming and writhing in pain. It's a really high pressure on the lower back, it's good fun. It hurts the quads, the hip flex. It hurts everything. It's just a real nasty move, which is why it works so well in the WWE. This move we used to call bullshit on because it didn't always hurt that much, but only recently someone has actually used the Walls of Jericho slash Boston Crab in an MMA fight, and he won. Congratulations, man. Just gonna show just yep. here. Right here. Uh, not looking happy in there, Steve. No, he really looks uncomfortable. Oh, Boston Crab! No! Boston oh, Crab! Boston oh, Crab! My God. Oh, he's oh. done it! The wall. Oh, and the Walls of Jericho oh, oh. finishes it! It's an incredible finish. No one was expecting it. He set it up completely different, which Brad is going to show you now. So he was from here to start off with, throwing some weird ground and pound. Doesn't matter because he made up for it in such a badass way in a minute. So we're hitting him with his terrible ground and pound, but the silly, sneaky little sausage he comes on the inside of one, the inside of the other. All right? Amazing. Locks him, <laughs> locks him up. Yeah. Comes back and sits on his lower back and then forcing that tap. Is Joe tapping? I can't hear any tapping. I can't hear any tapping. <laughs> I felt the spine come out of his ass. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, in lower level competitions, you can't do spinal cranks, you can't do twisters, you can't do a Boston Crab. But what a lot of people can use, the potential setup of a Boston Crab, is from guard to pick the legs to roll and then to take the back. Okay, so we've been joined in the ring by my mate Scott Glist. He watched us filming and was like, I want some of that. And I've also got a better technique for the BJJ application of the Walls of Jericho. Ow! <laughs> so there you go, it happens that fast. So there you have it guys, we hope you enjoyed the video. This was our attempt at putting a WWE spin on some UFC style moves. If you have any moves you would like
like us to test out in the future, please bang it in the comments. Make sure that you subscribe and hit that little bell button. We're trying to get to 100k so we can set up some YouTuber fights. We hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you check back for another one very soon. We are out.